amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears release. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone. I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone. I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, my chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun will bear to shine but God who calls me here below will be forever mine will be forever
and many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave blessed consolation That my trials come to own Beach MCC on this extremely windy day. We are so glad that you're with us and for our folks who are joining us virtually. Hopefully you're hunkered down at home and you're not going to blow away. I don't think we're going to blow away, but we might. <laughs> but we're going to have service anyways, right? right. And so let's uh, go ahead and uh, 
open our service with our opening song, our welcoming of the Holy Spirit. And sing out loud. you have brought, that it would blow away the dirt and the debris, that it would cleanse us, that it would give us a newness today, that it would refresh all of our senses. And so we just thank you so much, Holy God, for that. And we thank you and we praise you and we honor and glorify your holy name. And so we just pray, dear God, that every syllable that is sung or spoken today would be pleasing and glorify your holy name. In all this we pray, amen. amen. And so speaking of wind, when I was driving to Good Sam this morning, out on the sidewalk, I think over on Sunflower, there was a woman with a, uh, like a border collie standing there. That dog had its nose right square into the, the wind and it was a <laughs> so it was enjoying the wind, as we should as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see what's up there. Announcements, yes. <coughs> so, what do we have? Let's see. Today is the seventh, and so Susan has a birthday today. Yeah. So happy birthday to her. And then coming up on the eighth, uh, Jennifer down in Arizona has a birthday, and the fifteenth, which is next something or other, next Monday. Karen has a birthday, and then we'll get to the rest of them another day, right? Mm -hmm. So we have some new entries there, which we'll get to as we go through the month. And so, you know, there really wasn't much in February. So it's actually January, February, and most of March up there on one little screen. How unusual, right? So on three, let's just wish them uh, a happy birthday, shall we? Uno, dos, tres. Happy birthday! All right. And so next, Benjamin. Yes, so of course we're still collecting uh, funds for duffel bags for the Youth Crisis Center because as we know, they arrive with all of their belongings in a black trash bag. And so we take duffel bags over there. And speaking of duffel bags, we received a wonderful Christmas card from the Youth Crisis Center thanking us so much. Is this the one? Yes. <coughs> Dear Resurrection Beach MCC, um, we want to say thank you so much for your support throughout the year for the duffel bags and the, the Halloween and the Easter sports and everything that you do to help provide a safe haven and hope to children and youth in need. We're truly grateful. Happy holidays to you and to those you love. Nancy, Isabel, staff, and children at Huntington Beach Youth Services Center. So that's what you guys do with the duffel bags and the art supplies and all of those things is you change people's lives. And so uh, what's next? 
Yes, coming up on Saturday, January 27th at Good Samaritan MCC in Whittier. They will be having a game evening and potluck. It'll start at 5.30 for anybody who's interested in going. Um, I will be up there all day because they're actually going to be doing a unhomed siblings uh, drive with the other churches in the Mission Collaborative up there. So we'll be there from 10 until noon and then we'll go get lunch and set up and then we'll have our game afternoon and evening and potluck. So anybody that would like to go to that, <laughs> let me know. Uh, I have the address right here. And so we can make sure that you have that information as well. So that's coming up on Saturday, January 27th. And then what's next, Benjamin? Yes, save the date. <laughs> Men Alive, the gay men's chorus of Orange County, is going to be having a iconic drag bingo evening. And so some of the folks in the chorus are going to be dressing up in drag and performing their favorite performer's songs. So... What a fun night that would be, right? If we can get a group of folks together to go and maybe do dinner first. It could be a Valentine's gift to yourself. It could be a Valentine's gift for your sweetheart or somebody. I don't know. So we'll uh, start pushing that and seeing. I think the tickets are probably going to be 25. They typically are. So, And if there's folks that want to go but uh, funds are a little tight, let me know. And I'm sure that we'll have some scholarship funds available as well so mark your calendar for that you'll you'll start to see more about that coming up real soon because before you know it february 10th will be here right so save the date for that and then there's like four or five more concerts coming up throughout the year so um it'd just be fun to go out and support our our brothers and our sisters and it's all inclusive and we can have a wonderful time so all right what's next there benjamin hmm I must have forgotten them. So, as I mentioned, early in December, we're going to start doing the, the spiritual gifts assessments and having those available so that we can start uh, figuring out what we need to do for leadership development uh, conferences and short little retreats. And then we will, so that we can be ready for uh, more youth and the children. And remember how I talked about from Ladera Ranch Pride, there was many families that were there with children five, six, and seven, and they were looking for an affirming church where they could take their children so that they would grow up to be affirming and welcoming. So we need to be working towards that and getting ready to be all that we need to be, including children's Sunday school. We already have the use of a nursery if we need it, so we will be moving forward in 2024, and I forgot to put that up there, but, oh well. So, what's next, Benjamin? Offering. So, let's go ahead and go here. So, yes, yeah, so we closed out the month of December with 3325, and as per our general, or our congregational meeting in November, we did reduce our budget because of uh, reduced rent for the storage, etc., and some other things that have gone down in price. And so our budget is 3000 Of course, it would be very lovely if we could continue to strive for 4200 which we haven't hit in a year, but <laughs> it's always good to have a good goal, right? And so, um, as you can see, we actually turned out $831 a week during the month of December, and that was with four worship services and a game night. So, we did pretty good. Y'all should give yourselves a, a round of applause. <laughs> and next, Benjamin. Yes, and so of course there's multiple ways. <coughs> this is our tie-dye pig, you know. He has gone, what was it, 200 and something went to the bank. I don't remember how much it was. Something like that, it was over 200 anyway. And so uh, the, the tie-dye pig likes to receive coinage and some greenery, likes a balanced diet, you know. Uh -huh. And so um, what the, the funds for this go to things like uh, LGBT low-income seniors meals, uh, metal roofs for victims of hurricanes in, the, in Puerto Rico we did one year, uh, pet food for people who are HIV positive for their pets, not that they're going to eat that, but for their pets, <laughs> um, and various things like that. And so 
Um, so there's multiple ways that you can make a donation, of course. Uh, you can tell us at the church number, 714-662-6972. You can go to our website, click on the donate button, it'll take you out to PayPal, which is secure. You can drop us a check in the mail, or you can come and visit us. You know, we like to have fun, and then we usually end up going out to dinner afterwards. So, <laughs> you're saying church is not fun? Equally. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good save. <laughs> so, uh, as we receive our offering here today, uh, Marilyn and Harry are going to start us off with our praise and worship. <laughs>
So is she. Isaiah 61 through 7, the message translation. People returning for the reunion. Get out of bed, Jerusalem. Wake up. Put your face in the sunlight. God's glory has risen for you. The whole earth is wrapped in darkness. All the people sunk in deep darkness. But God rises on you. His glory breaks over you. Nations will come to your light, kings to burst your sunlight. Look up, look around, watch as they gather, watch as they approach you. Your sons coming from great distances, your daughters carried by their nannies. When you see them coming, you'll have smiles, big smiles. Your heart, and <clears throat> excuse me, your heart will swell and yes, burst. All those people returning for their reun reunion, a rich harvest of exiles gathering from in from the nations. And then streams of camel caravans as far as the eye can see. Young camels of nomads in Midian and Ephod pouring in from the south from Sheba, loaded with gold and frankincense, preaching the praises of God. Amen. Amen. Matthew 2, 1 through 12 in the Passion Translation. Jesus was born in Bethlehem near Jerusalem during the reign of King Herod. After Jesus' birth, a group of spiritual priests from the east came to Jerusalem and inquired of the people, where is the child who was born king of the Jewish people? We have observed his star rising in the sky, and we have come to bow before him in worship. King Herod was shaken to the core when he heard this. And not only he, but all of Jerusalem was disturbed when they heard this news. So he called a meeting of the Jewish, Jewish ruling priests and religious scholars, demanding that they tell him where the promised Messiah was prophesied to be born. He will be born in Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, they told him, because the prophecy states, and you, little Bethlehem, are not insignificant among the clans of Judah. For out of you will emerge the shepherd king of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the spiritual priests from the east to ascertain the exact time the star first appeared. <coughs> and he told them, now go to Bethlehem and carefully look there for the child. And when you found him, report to me so that I can go and bow down and worship him too. And on their way to Bethlehem, the same star that they had seen in the east suddenly reappeared. Amazed, they watched as it went ahead of them and stopped directly over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were so ecstatic that they shouted and celebrated with unrestrained joy. When they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they fell to the ground at his feet and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests full of gifts and presented him with gold frankincense, and myrrh. Afterwards, they returned to their own country by an other route because God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. So, today is Epiphany Sunday, right? The day when uh, we celebrate that the, the Magi, the three wise people, came to wherever Jesus was, you know, he was probably around two years old by now. And they were there to worship the baby Jesus, right? And epiphany, a new understanding, a new beginning. And so last week at Good Sam, uh, because the message last week was uh, praising the Lord. And, you know, we're called to praise God no matter who we are, where we are, or anything, right? And so this is a book, and it's entitled A Promise in every color. And so, it's a book of hope <coughs> for all the world. So we're going to start off our messages today with a book of hope. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have three videos. Uh, two of them will be from elders of the denomination, and the other one will be from the Reverend Elder Cecilia Eggleston. So, we will have 
three videos for our message today, okay? So, a promise in every color. And so there's a gentleman sitting there in a chair on a hill, and a dove has descended onto his hand. How beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Now, after the great rain ended, the angry clouds blew far away, and the sky was painted with a promise in every color of the earth that day. There's all kinds of beautiful flowers. There's all kinds of colors here. It's amazing, and I have not turned the volume on Facebook down. No, there we go. And so, it came in the color of the rich red soil in a long ago village tucked way up high. And so, this is uh, some Native Americans, some Native uh, peoples, and in the red soil. If you've never seen the red soil, it's Gorgeous. It's in the South, where I've seen it anyway. Georgia red soil. <laughs> It'll make your heart go pitter patter. <laughs> and it came in the color of the orange sun, like a dragon fire in the eastern sky. And so here we have a picture of uh, an, an Asian village. And so there's women there. And we now have the red and the orange from our rainbow colors, right? And they're carrying water buckets, I guess. These are really thick pages, by the way. <laughs> it came in the color of the soft yellow, like sand, like waves, and water in circling pools. And here we are in the Middle East. There's camels, there's desert, there's sand. And we now have red, orange, and yellow. I wonder where this could be going. <laughs> I don't know. And it came in the color of a sweet green meadow, all dressed with the wildflower jewels. And I would say that this is somewhere in the Netherlands, because there's a lot of flowers here and a lot of tulips. <laughs> and so we now have red, orange, yellow, and green. It came in the color of a clear blue river doing its twisty dance downstream. And this is uh, in Africa. What a reminder for us that the colors of the rainbow are everywhere in the world, right? It's a global thing, just like MCC is a global denomination. So we now have red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. I wonder what could be next. <laughs> it came in the color of the great purple mountains that lift us up where we can dream. The promise is for me, and the promise is for you, and for all of the people in the world below. And this is in Central America, I would say. So, and we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Imagine that. Oh. <gasps> And now, it's the gift of love and joy and peace, wrapped in every color of a bright rainbow. And so, we are all a rainbow people. We all have different gifts and talents. We all have a special color that God created us to be so that we could bring love and joy and peace into the world. And so, with that, we will now begin our three videos. The first one will be from one of our elders, and then Reverend Elder Cecilia Eggleston, and then we'll have a, an epiphany one from another elder. As travelers to the big city, Mary and Joseph likely did not know Simeon or Anna, but Simeon and Anna were known to their own congregation. 
Many congregants could likely recite Simeon's bucket list item as he retold and retold the story of the Holy Spirit promising directly to him that she would not let him die until Simeon had witnessed God's promised one with his very own eyes. She even urged Simeon to get up early that morning and get to church on time. Many could likely tell stories of the widow prophet Anna ministering within the congregation for six full decades beyond her husband's untimely death. Many could likely tell their own stories of encounters with Anna and Simeon. They were part of the community, woven into the faithful so fully that perhaps their regular presence was just assumed and taken for granted. Perhaps some knew which exit to take to avoid them if they were in a particular scurry to be somewhere else and didn't want to spare the time for the two to tell the same stories just as they had been told before. Simeon and Anna practiced presence. They brought assurance and familiarity to others who saw them in their proper place, in their proper pew. But more than presence, they also gave unsolicited blessings to those they encountered. They lived long, dreamed dreams, and shared those dreams as Joel predicted, the old shall dream dreams. Mary and Joseph are doing what the usual is expected, making a small sacrifice and presenting their eight-day-old son for circumcision. The usual things matter and can bring reassurance during the trying times of Roman occupation. Adding to the familiar ritual, Simeon and Anna offer their welcome and blessings to this family far from home. I don't know how many mothers who hand their eight-day-old infant to a stranger, even at church. I remember my youngest sister, 20 years my junior, bringing her baby to, to Houston to the church she grew up in to be baptized. What we didn't know was that the pastor was going to walk the baby up the center aisle and then hand the baby off to an unknown congregant to bring back. The concerned look on my sister's face relaxed with assurance as she recognized Mr. Fowler, her and my youth counselor, 20 year span, bringing her baby to the front. He had continued to listen to the spirit too, to dream dreams and to bring assurance and blessings like Simeon and Anna. Who are the Simeons and Anna of your community? Are you a Simeon or Anna? The capacity to offer presence and bless others is a wonderful gift to share whatever age you are. What blessings will you bring? Will you be on the lookout within all the usual things going on for what needs to be revealed, what needs to be blessed? You then will be God's bearer of good news. Amen. Hello everyone, I'm Reverend Elder Cecilia Eggleston, moderator of Metropolitan Community Churches, and I bring you Christmas greetings from the Governing Board, the Council of Elders and the MCC staff. And I'm delighted to share the message with you on this New Year's Eve. One of the things that I love to do to relax is I have a, an app on my tablet which is colouring in by numbers and I love it I find it very relaxing and you can choose what you want to colour in so a picture of a bird or a um, landscape whatever it is and you click on the, the different bits and it gets coloured in but there are also mystery ones so it's just a plain frame with numbers in it and you don't know what the picture is going to be and I love doing those. So one of these uh, pictures instead of a square frame had the outline of a bird. I think it was a crane and I thought well this will be different I'll give this one a go. So I started to choose the numbers and it was very intriguing because when I was doing the bird's head or the bird's legs bird-like colours appeared. But once I started inside the main body of the outline, I couldn't tell what was going on, but different things started to appear. And eventually, this amazing Japanese landscape was revealed with trees, a bridge, beautiful water, 
mountains, a sunset and a house, all inside the outline of this crane. It's really quite fantastic and it's still my favourite picture. Now bear with me and remember that because I'm going to come back to it later. Let us pray. God of many names, you were revealed through the Christ child Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus and all it means to each of us, may we hear your words and live in your way through this time together. Amen. It's one of the names of Jesus that I love, Emmanuel, God with us. Doesn't that hold such promise for us? In the Gospel according to Matthew, the writer uses a quote from the prophet Isaiah to claim this name for Jesus when his name and his destiny is revealed to Joseph in a dream by, with an angel. And in the Gospel reading set for today, we hear the testimony of Simeon, Simeon this uh, devout, faithful man of the temple who every day went in there because God had made him a promise that he would see the Messiah. And so Jesus' parents take their tiny child into the temple as part of a ritual and this is what Simeon sees, a light for all. And so we read from Luke 2. Now there lived in Jerusalem a man named Simeon. He was devout and just, anticipating the consolation of Israel, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, O oh God, you can dismiss your servant in peace, just as you have promised. For my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all peoples to see, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and a glory of your people Israel. A light of revelation. Gentiles just refers to the people who are not Jewish. So Jesus was born to be Emmanuel, God with us, a light of revelation for all. And these ancient promises are still true for us today. And there's more. In Joseph's, in, oh goodness, in Luke's gospel, chapter 17, Jesus is being questioned by the Pharisees, the local folk of the time who were nitpicking and trying to find fault with what Jesus was teaching and the way that he was speaking with such authority. And the, the Pharisees want to know when the realm of God will come. And Jesus replied, the coming of the realm of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the realm of God is in your midst. Some translations that we are more familiar with say, the kingdom of God is within you. Listen to those two amazing statements again. Through Jesus, God is with us. And Jesus tells us the realm of God is within us. God is present to us and through us. So let's go back to the coloured in crane for a moment. Imagine instead of the outline of the crane, it's an outline of each of us, of you, of me. So I invite you just for a moment to imagine your own outline. And instead of looking at a beautiful Japanese landscape, within that outline, we are actually looking at the realm of God. The realm of God, the kingdom of God 
is within each one of us. So what does that look like? What is that landscape? Here are just some thoughts. Rivers of justice flowing down, filled by streams of righteousness. Still waters where Yahweh renews your spirit. A place where a nation will not take up sword against nation and nor will they train for war anymore. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding, the peace of God that Jesus offered his disciples when they greeted him after the resurrection is evident and available to all people. Maybe in your landscape there are buildings, a house of prayer for all people, a mansion where there are enough rooms for everyone so no one has to go without shelter. A place where everyone has enough to eat and drink and God's joy is evident. As Nehemiah says, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our God. Do not grieve for the joy of Yahweh is your strength. I'm sure as you think and pray about this, you can find even more descriptions of the realm of God that is within you. This realm, this kingdom already exists within each one of us. And we know that through Jesus, God is with us always. We are beloved children of God. This is quite a powerful combination to be moving into a new year, don't you think? And we are part of making all of this a reality. We already are holders of what the world could look like and we are the people to help make it happen. God is present within us. We are God's presence in the world. That's a lot. So we can learn again from Jesus about how we live into the fullness of that. Jesus took time alone. Jesus attended to his relationship with God. He prayed. He learned. He listened. And he was also in community. He had his chosen family of the disciples and he worked with them in the community to make a difference, to teach, to heal, to feed, to guide. And so we too need to do that. We need to take time to work on our personal relationship with God, to nurture that connection, to go deeper in our own faith journey and we worship and minister in community, learning from each other, using each other's gifts and skills and going forward together to do God's will. As we know, 2023 has been a profoundly difficult year in so many ways. And yet MCCs around the world, you, have been making a difference. You have been faithful and resilient and generous. You have helped to create sacred spaces where people feel welcomed and can feel like they belong. You have worked for justice and against oppression in your local community, in your city, in your country, in the world. You have fed the hungry, clothed those without shelter, encouraged the children and supported your elders. You have cared for the planet. You have worked to make your neighborhood a more nurturing place to be. You have offered safe spaces to those whose society has regarded as outcasts and given them a place to safely gather and build community. You have been present in loving, caring, strong and resilient ways. You have made a difference. And what's wonderful is that we 
as MCC around the world make a difference. We know that 2024 is going to contain many of the challenges that we have experienced this year. War, economic hardship, oppressive politics and harmful religious rhetoric. And like so many faith communities, MCC is still figuring out how we can be church in an ever-changing and evolving landscape. Yet, MCC around the world will continue to make a difference by our presence and by our action. So I invite each one of you as we enter this new year to really pray about, to focus on which part of God's realm you are going to bring in to reality in 2024. Because we don't have to do it all. We just have to do the bit that is ours to do. There's a wonderful quote from Mother Teresa who worked with the most poor, the most destitute in India and uh, supported them, nurtured them, looked after them. And she said, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. It is God's great unconditional love that we share every time that we do something, no matter how small, that offers hope, joy and justice to another of God's children, another human being that God also loves unconditionally. Together, let us make more of God's realm present in this new year, knowing that God, Emmanuel, is always with us. I wish you every blessing for 2024. Amen. Hi, welcome once again to the MCC Council of Elders Reflection on Advent and Christmas. And now as the new year has begun, we're in Epiphany. And I, something about the story of Epiphany delights me so much that the people were waiting and waiting for the Messiah and didn't recognize him when he came. But from the Far East, astrologers came and they knew and they recognized and they worshiped the Messiah. And I think that that is how the Spirit of God tends to work in our world, that God will work in ways that start from the outside. And so often it's the religious institutions that just don't recognize what God is doing. I look at movements like the movement for deconstruction of faith and the movement for progressive theology and spaces like Metropolitan Community Church in our world where people are asking hard questions, they're making room for conversations about faith, they're allowing faith to be separated from uh, from religious politics and the religious right. And there are so many people in our world who really still love and want to follow Jesus but are so tired and are so sick of religiosity. And yet, churches around the world seem to cry out for God to work, for God to send revival, for God to bring enlightenment and awakening, and for the Holy Spirit to move. And yet, it's happening all around us. 
just as in the days of Jesus, when Jesus walked, and it was the people who were on the outside, people who were rejected by the religious institutions that recognized him. It's people on the outside today that recognize the work of the Spirit. And that is one of the things that I just love about metropolitan community churches, that here we are on the fringes, and yet we are the people who God loves, the people who are hosting the Holy Spirit. And this is really true revival. And thank you so much for being a part of this movement. Uh, I have loved being a part of MCC for uh, 20 years now for this exact reason. And I want to pray God's blessing on this movement as, uh, as we now get ready for the coming year. God, I pray that you would continue to pour out your blessing, that you would do a new thing in our midst through metropolitan community churches, through all the different church spaces that are open to seeing and recognizing the work of your spirit that's happening right here in our midst. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Eggleston spoke about um, that we are uh, the change, that we are representing uh, the gospel and all of that, and that how we do change people's lives, right? Even in the ways that we don't even think about, we just do it like our, our prayer time and our prayer text line and things. And so we received a Christmas card this year and it says, wishing you a magical Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you for the love and the prayers that you give me throughout the year from uh, Frank to me. So we don't, we take for granted what we do and we just do it, don't we? And we don't, sometimes even think about how what little we do really impacts and affects people's lives. And so speaking of prayer time, I believe that's Frida. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. We have a, <coughs> excuse me, just a few prayer issues tonight. Uh, Jeffrey is very happy and is raising praises that Daniel is home safe. We have praise for our traveling mercies. And prayer for Michael, who's home with it, with back <coughs> issues, uh, feels that arthritis in his back is really acting up. And prayers for Chuck Anderson, who had um, kidney stones, and now he has some urinary tract issues, which I imagine is an infection. I think probably it is. And Laura Williams, uh, not many of you have really met her, but she has been a member of this con congregation on and off for eight years. Well, at least. Yeah. At least eight years. Uh, she's had an, an accident. Actually, the way she stated it is, her car had an accident. <laughs> <laughs> it must have driven off a cliff, I don't know. <laughs> By itself. But anyway, unfortunately, it's undrivable. So we need to keep her in prayer. She cares for her mother, who is um, elderly. And her health, uh, Laura's health, is not very good. So even though she's only asking about the car, I think we need to hold Laura up because she's got a lot on her plate, as do many of the people that we see in this congregation and also that we have contact with in the outside world. Who else has got a prayer request tonight? Um, for the praises um, that my daughter is doing much better and able Praise to God. eat and she's not having to go. She had medication she can take, but she had only had to take it a couple of times. Nice. Which um, the, the risk was that she would be in the hospital for most of the pregnancy, and she's doing she's wonderful. Praise God. Yeah. Answer yeah. prayer. Anyone else? I've asked uh, for prayer before for my neighbor, George, who mm -hmm. has cancer, and um, doesn't seem to be getting better. He's going through radiation now. Mm -hmm. um, it's an unusual cancer, uh, rare cancer. And, and then also, 
Um, I happened to get back in contact with somebody I had known years ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was my first love. <laughs> <laughs> I see that grin on your face. <laughs> but she has throat cancer. No. So oh. her name is Kendra. And um, uh, her, we pray for her and George. Okay. Anyone else? Pray for Diana's parents. Absolutely. Yes. Diana and Eric and Diana's sisters, all of us seeking for Miss Mitchell. Yeah. Um, her daughter is just not feeling well. Well, she's been in the hospital since Christmas Eve with COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just for her sweet heart. I believe he progressed then to pneumonia. Right. So it's not good. Yeah. Anyone else? Do we know his name? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Silent request. Let's go to God. Loving God, we come before you tonight and we say thank you. We say thank you for everything that you do in our lives that we don't always recognize. And Lord, I ask that you, that we would just lift up George and Kendra. They both have cancer. And all of the other people in this world who are suffering with that affliction. Lord, I ask that you would touch them all with healing. With people around them to care for them and to encourage them. And make sure that they know that there is a tomorrow and that you are with them. And Lord, I ask that you be with Diana Fidel and her family as they have to make choices about their dad who's quite very ill. Be with Diana and her sisters. Let them know that they, whatever they decide, that you're with them and that you're helping them to make the right decisions. And Lord, we thank you that <coughs> Daniel got home safely. We thank you that Hannah is doing much better, that she is beginning to be a healthy person, carrying a healthy baby. And Lord, I just, I just ask that you would be with this entire congregation, that you would bless them, that you would lift them up, and that you would be with them each and every day in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 So that brings us to the time in our service when we are invited to be at table with Christ Jesus. And so as I uh, consecrate these elements and then uh, as they're being distributed Harry and Mar Marilyn will come and lead us in the song I will change your name and so holy God we come before you right now and we just ask that you would bless these elements grains of the earth and fruit of the vine that you would make them for us representative of the body and the blood of your son Christ Jesus who died on the cross so that we might have life eternal in heaven. And so we just ask your God that you would bless these elements and that you would bless the receiver as well. In these things we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs>
think so. At Resurrection Beach MCC, as at every MCC throughout the world, this is not our table. This is Christ's table. And as such, we simply have the privilege to be able to share it together with all who are here and those who are joining us virtually. And so, on the night when Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, his family of choice, uh, the people who uh, spent the three years in ministry with him, and when he returned back to the table after having washed the feet of those there, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of unleavened bread. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he broke it. And he said to those gathered there, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you receive of this, receive again everything that I taught you and the love of God. He passed it among them, and they consumed it. When they had consumed the bread, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a cup of wine. We believe it to be the cup of Elijah put out in anticipation of the coming Messiah. And he raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and then he breathed into it with the very same breath, the same essence, the same spirit that God had breathed into Adam. And he said, this cup represents the new covenant that I make with you today, the covenant and whenever you receive of this cup, be reminded of the covenant that I make with you today. He passed it among them, and they consumed it as well. Holy God, creator of all that we are, all that we have, and all that we will ever be, regardless of what color on the spectrum of the rainbow we are, we know, holy God, that you have called each one of us to be that light, that reflection of the light of your son, Jesus Christ. And so we pray, dear God, that as we receive these elements each and every time, that we would be restored, renewed, refreshed, recharged, and that we would truly be all that you have called us to be, the hands, the feet, the face, and the voice of Jesus to those in need, bringing peace, love, joy, and justice where we go. Amen. Amen. So that brings us to our closing song, which, as usual, <coughs> is quite the new slab of them. Uh, Harry and Meryl. <laughs>
Send your anointing touch to fall afresh on each person who's going to have anything to do with the food that we are going to receive this week. We want to especially pray for the farm workers, transportation workers, processing plant workers, all of those people who may get injured while trying to prepare and store the food that we're going to receive. And we ask also, Holy God, that you would keep the home cook safe because we know, Holy God, that there's an extra ingredient in those meals, and it's called love, and that you would keep them safe as well. And anoint the food, Holy God, please, so that it will nourish our bodies so that we can go and be all that you are calling us to be, just as Reverend Eggleston talked about, about being you and taking care of the people in this room. All of this we pray in your holy name. Amen. And so, <coughs> until next week, a huge thank you to Marilyn and Harry. Chris on camera. Thank you. Kevin on uh, greeting on Zoom. Thank you. Benjamin on the computer and the PowerPoint and keeping me straight, which is pretty hard to do. Impossible. Impossible. Impossible, yes. Free brain. Free brain. Free brain. Free brain. Free brain. <laughs> and like uh, making sure things go like smoothly. Like they're okay. supposed to, yes. Right. <laughs> a huge thank you to Debbie and Joyce for scriptures. Yes. And a huge thank you to all of you, whether you're watching us, whether you're participating virtually or right here in the worship space. What about the one that did gave out? Oh yes, Frida. Of course. How can I forget? <laughs> oh, how can you, you forget? You've been doing this for how many decades? I think I'm part of the wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you should still like be thanked. Yeah, yeah. As long as you look good doing it. All right. So on three, let's uh, just no, like send the, the world some love, shall we? All right. One, two, three. Mwah!